The Gram-Schmidt process is a process for taking a basis and turning it into an orthogonal basis. Graham Schmidt. The Graham Schmidt process is based on orthogonal projections. Let's think of this sheet of paper as a plane, but let's think of it as a plane in three-dimensional space. So you could come up off the paper or go down under the paper. This plane, is a two-dimensional subspace of R3. And let's say We have these two vectors as our basis vectors. And they are a basis. They are linearly independent. And there are two of them. And two linearly independent vectors in a two-dimensional space forms a basis. We can project one of these basis vectors onto the other to get to that vector. So if this is y, the projection is y hat. This vector is y minus y hat. Now this vector and this vector are orthogonal. Orthogonal vectors are linearly independent. So these two vectors are two linearly independent vectors in a two-dimensional space. So they're a basis of this two-dimensional space. And that gives you the essential idea behind the Gram-Schmidt process. We start with a basis. We've got a subspace of Rn, and we've got a basis of that subspace. Our goal is going to be to create an orthogonal basis. V1, V2, up to Vn. 
Okay. And we're going to proceed basically as we outlined here. We started with two vectors, a basis. We did a projection and we got an orthogonal basis. And one of the vectors vectors in the original basis is still in the orthogonal basis. V1 will simply equal x1. As for V2, we'll now do our projection. So it's X2 minus the projection on to V1. And again, that's exactly what happened up here. I mean, we are calling our vectors different things, but we took the second vector in the basis, we projected it onto the first vector. That projection gives us y hat. And then we subtract to get this orthogonal vector. Exact same thing. We're doing the projection, then we're subtracting to get an orthogonal vector. V3 Same idea, we perform an orthogonal projection, then we subtract the result to get an orthogonal vector. We're going to project x3 orthogonally onto the span of these two vectors. So it's x3 minus the projection of x3 onto v1 minus the projection of x3 on to V2. And we proceed in this fashion. Uh, so notice that each of these V is, is defined in terms of the V's that come before it. Well, this first V was defined in terms of the just the original basis X. So V2 is defined in terms of V1. V3 is defined in terms of V1 and V2. 
and we just keep doing these orthogonal projections and subtracting the results. V sub P is the orthogonal projection of X sub P on to V sub one, or rather, we're subtracting that orthogonal projection. We subtract the orthogonal projection on to V2. We subtract the orthogonal projection on to V3. And we just keep going until we've subtracted all of the orthogonal projections. V sub P minus one being the last that appears here. And that's the Gram-Schmidt process. Um, doing the Gram-Schmidt process by hand is admittedly not the most enthralling piece of mathematics anyone can do. All those dot products do get a little tedious over time. But it's an important tool to have in your toolbox, even if in most real world situations it would be done via computer.